because that's ultimately what I find most impressive about something as cool as going to space. It's how it all meshes together, how all the systems and the humans and the chemicals and all of that kind of in a coordinated, synchronized way it leads to success. That's fascinating to me on its own right. And, uh, and that's probably, you know, the problem with TV is we'd like to focus on people. One person is, makes it simpler, but that's the cooler story if you can figure out how to tell it that way. Two airplanes with a wheel and a throttle and so I put my uh, prosthetic on the wheel uh, and it fits in there nicely and um, the distance between um, the wheel and the throttle is very short so if I set up the airplane properly and I have the prosthetic locked in I can go back and forth between the two and it's really the most critical moment is pretty much on landing when you're trying to you know get the power settings just right and so forth and so I, I figured it out it was actually it turned out to be uh, not as difficult as I thought it was going to be. How did you manage to be one of the top science and space reporters we know? I mean, I can't think of another. Yeah, so I think there's, there's this idea of, number one, finding what you love. And not everybody can do that. That's, you know, I, I, when I say that, I'm cognizant. There are a lot of people who never find their real passion. It does happen. But I am lucky that I found a passion pretty early on for... I enjoyed writing, I enjoyed telling stories, I enjoyed photography, it all kind of just was my, my happy place. I knew when I kind of bluffed my way into the science job, uh, science reporter's job at CNN, I knew uh, what I loved. I knew I loved telling stories. I, I gotta say, president of CNN, that you should hire me to be the science correspondent because I don't know science. I wasn't sure if that was entirely true, but, but actually it turned out to be so because I knew in my heart of hearts that I was going to work as hard as I could, do the extra homework, rely on some mentors in, uh, in and outside of CNN to figure out the science part, to help people understand a complex world. All of that just fascinated me. And uh, so, and I, I guess confidence comes from knowing you have that desire, but you also have some innate talent to pull it off. And um, the science part was probably on the edge. Maybe you could call that uh, stretching the, my confidence level, but sometimes it's best to know what you don't know. I've been very busy over the past couple of days getting ready for the uh, SpaceX demo to the, the crude launch of SpaceX from uh, about 90 minutes from where I am right now in Vero Beach, Florida, up the, up the coast at the Kennedy Space Center. That launch is coming uh, on the 27th, and um, I, I'm probably going to date your podcast, but uh, it's been nine years since the shuttle last flew, STS-135, July of 11, wow. and uh, which is really, uh, you know, that's it's a long period of time. People always ask me, do you miss going to the launches? And what I really missed is the people that I used to congregate with, you know, four or five times a year, this little happy band of space watchers. To have that uh, opportunity to, you know, work with Walter Cronkite covering the John Glenn mission uh, and to have the responsibility and, you know, the, the, the mission to uh, be on the air for 16 straight hours when Columbia disintegrated in February of 03. That's what you kind of get in the business for, to you know, explain that, demystify it, help people through a natural, national tragedy, and also a triumph. And that's what I've always liked about space in particular, but science as well, is that ultimately these, the moments that bind us together with, in space are, are joyous moments generally. Yes, we lose, we lose orbiters, but we also land on Mars and bring back amazing pictures, or, or we put footprints on the moon. There aren't many stories like that that are those you know universal stories that we all remember and know where we were that aren't you know either wars or assassinations so that's part of why i enjoy what i do you could start imagining getting to um beyond our solar system in a more practical more 
multi-generational time frame potentially, or, or a, even, even the lifetime of one person. But it's going to take a while to, to um, get there. And, uh, you know, we haven't even gotten to Mars yet. So we've got we've to gotta solve that one first and see how that goes. And, you yep. know, it's, it, think about how, how lonely it would be to be on that mission. You know, you're probably, you're not coming back and you're not going to get much help. But then again, think about what it was like to, for, you know, Christopher Columbus to set sail. Uh, it's not like they had, uh, they could call Houston when they had trouble and say, we have a problem. So human beings have done this. Think about the Polynesians getting in those canoes and just start, they started paddling, you know, navigating with the stars and somehow they found Hawaii, the most isolated island chain in the world. You know, how did that happen? So humans figure these things out. I, 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 it, these are not uh, insignificant problems, but they are solvable if we, if we focused on it and decided it was important. That's another way of asking, do we need to set big goals in space, right? Is it, is it that we're missing the Neil Armstrong or that we're missing audacious goals? The people who fit in, who, who execute those audacious goals will ultimately become the next Neil Armstrongs. We don't put uh, astronauts on the pedestal that we did in that first generation, the right stuff generation. And I think overall, that's, that's probably pretty healthy. As Neil Armstrong would remind us, it, 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 there's a lot more to this than the, the people who ride on the pointy end of the rocket. And <clears throat> you know, I say that as a person who is a former network anchor, I always felt like I was the, uh, the astronaut on the pointy end of the, uh, the rocket getting all the credit while there's hundreds of people behind me in the newsroom making me look good. So I think what we need to celebrate are the goals and, and go after them and go after them and make a decision to do it and, and don't allow politics to get in our way. Find some big goals. Let's, let's decide for real to go to Mars and just do this. And out of that will ar arise heroes, but I, I don't think we should ever overlook the the thousands of people who make the heroes look good. Cause that's ultimately what I find most impressive about something as cool as going to space. It's how it all meshes together, how all the systems and the humans and the chemicals and all of that kind of in a coordinated synchronized way leads to success. That's fascinating to me on its own right. And, uh, and that's probably, you know, the problem with TV is we'd like to focus on people. One person is, makes it simpler, but that's the cooler story if you can figure out how to tell it that way.